the gut of one. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest tonight is Mwangi Katai. He is a pacer with Nike. I first met Mwangi at the inaugural of the Back of My Feet a couple of years ago. This is a great organization, and we're going to cover it later on the show. So please welcome my guest, Mwangi. Thank you for having me, Will. It's great to be here. Let's get started by introducing yourself, by telling us a little bit, tell us where you were born, a little bit about your childhood. I was uh, born in Kenya, and I, was, I lived in Kenya on a farm for my first uh, eight years before moving to the U.S. My dad was a student, uh, and he was a very ambitious student, so he decided he wanted to uh, pursue his studies, uh, which found him going to college in Kenya and then eventually earning a scholarship to come to the U.S. Excellent. So as soon as he did that, we followed along and came here for the first time in, uh, when I was eight years old. Uh, I moved to Minnesota in the dead of winter. Uh -oh. So it's very different, uh, very different climate. Weather. Yeah, it was it was uh, middle of summer in Kenya. It was middle of winter here. Uh, so we lived in Minnesota for two years. Um, I ended up going to grade school there, a uh, school called Brim Hall Elementary. And then two years later, we moved back to Kenya. And then I found myself back in the U.S. Uh, when I was 13. So second trip back when I was 13. Living on a farm, it sounds like you had plenty of opportunity to run around and cause mischief. We did, we did, yeah. We were always getting into things, and it, we were always very, very adventurous. And uh, living on a farm is, is, is fun, it's interesting. Well, it sounds like you had siblings? Yes, I do. I have two sisters, two younger sisters. Okay. Uh, one of them lives here in New York. He's actually getting married soon. Oh, congratulations yeah. to your sister. Yep, and the other one is in Seattle. Um, working at the University of Washington. Oh, excellent, yep. excellent. So let's go back into the States. You're now 13 years old. I yep. guess you're now going to high school? Yes. We lived in Rhode Island at the time. So I attended high school in Rhode Island, South Kingstown High School, where I was a pretty good student, I guess you could say. Uh, my my uh, focus was on sports, though. I really wanted to get involved in sports. And so I played, I played soccer in the fall, which is something I grew up with when I was in Kenya. And then I played, um, I wrestled in the winter, and I ran track in the spring. Well, you don't look that big, were yeah, you? Yeah, I was, were you? I was uh, in high school, I was actually 103 my freshman year, uh -huh. graduated at 125, so I was pretty, pretty, pretty small guy. <laughs> did you have any success as a wrestler? I did, I did. I guess my, uh, one of my biggest uh, athletic accomplishments was, uh, my senior year, I was second in the state. Excellent. So, so I guess it's more than just bulk. It has yeah. to do with a lot of skills. It does have a lot, uh, ha have a lot to do with skills. It, they divide it up by weight classes, mm -hmm. so you're actually wrestling people around your same okay. size uh, okay. for the most part. Okay, yeah. cool. And so off to college you went, I guess? Yeah. I went to Brown University, and I was there to study biology, and uh, I was on a pre-med track. So wow, my goal was ambitious. to become, yeah, my goal was to actually become a doctor. Okay. Yeah. A couple years into it, I switched majors and found myself at the University of Rhode Island where my dad was teaching okay. at the time. Okay. And so you switched majors from biology or did you? To business. Business. Yeah. Okay. So um, ended up getting a, a, a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Was that a difficult decision to make? Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, not too difficult. I was, uh, my, my interest had changed and I was actually, uh, fortunate enough to be in a school where he, my dad taught, so I, okay. so the tuition was oh, basically okay. there's no okay. tuition. So after graduating, I ended up uh, finding, you know, renewing this passion for running, okay. which I had in high school, and uh, I started to train for what I thought would be the most interesting race, which would be a half marathon. Okay. So skipped straight from, you know, running five miles a week or something to, you know, training for half. Okay. And uh, my first half was in Providence uh, soon after I graduated, but before I left the city. Mm -hmm. I ran the Ocean State Half Marathon, okay. which is now called something, it went from Ocean State to, I believe, uh, the Rock and Roll. Oh, Robert's okay. Half? The Rock and Roll, that's a brand. So yeah. They took over. Yeah, and then I think they stopped doing that too. So. Okay, this is in Providence. Providence, Rhode Island. They don't have too many races. I remember a friend of mine trying to do the 50 states, and Providence was going to be difficult okay. because they didn't have one for a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so after Rock and Roll took it over, it, I think it did pretty well. I mean, I, I ran it when it was yeah. the Rock and Roll half yeah, yeah. twice, 
and then I think this year they decided not to do it anymore. Okay. So it's kind of unfortunate. Okay. Yeah. At some point, you became a member of the Dashing Weapons reading your bio. Yeah. So how did, how did you find them, or did they find you? No, I found them. I moved to the tri-state area um, soon after I ran that half marathon. I decided to move to the tri-state area and, and pursue a, um, a career in finance uh -huh. because that was my focus in college. And so I ended up living in Jersey uh, for a few years, Montclair, New Jersey, and working for the New York Fed. And so I was there for six years, and most of that time was, wasn't really spent, um, I mean, I ran, but I didn't really compete. Mm -hmm. I was just running to stay in shape. Yeah. I was also cross-training a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I actually had a goal of competing at one point in, uh, in like uh, body bodybuilding competitions. Cause my, <laughs> my best friend was, uh, was a professional bodybuilder, so <laughs> he always tried to get me to do that. I'm sure you'll see this. With a friend like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was really close to, to doing that. And really? then I, I, again, rediscovered a passion for, for running, running. Uh, especially towards the, the latter years at the Fed. Uh -huh. uh, I, I met some really, really nice people who worked at the Fed, and they were very much into fitness mm -hmm. and running. And so we started doing these lunch runs. So at lunchtime, we would leave the Fed, we would go run over the Brooklyn Bridge or, you know, somewhere along right, right. Um, the Wall Street area. My goodness, that's doing, uh, you know, it's pretty hot. It could be hot in the middle of the day. Yeah, it, it was in many cases. And, and the Brooklyn Bridge was tricky because there were so many Oh, tours. that's right, traffic. So, traffic. Yeah. So you really got to love running to do this. We loved it. We loved it. And so we did that for a while. And that actually uh, spurred my interest in competing mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. I started to find that that desire to compete. Well, I remember you did the corporate challenge at yeah. some point. Is that yep. was part of the that Fed? Was, that was as part of the Fed, yeah. It was the Fed's team. And, and how did guys do? Uh, we, did, we did pretty well, I think. <laughs> I don't quite remember how. It was how a four-miler, I think. Yeah, it was a three-and-a-half-miler. Three-and-a-half, okay. Yeah, it was three-and-a-half, and we ran it in Central Park. Um, by the end of 2010, I, I had caught the bug, the racing bug. Okay. And so I decided to become a member of New York Roadrunner okay. and, um, and start to train, you know, more seriously Kay. for these races. But you still haven't had a team yet? Still didn't have a team. Kay, no, you were, I was you were just, solo? I was just, I was just a, 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 free, a, free, uh, <laughs> a free agent. Free basically. agent, unattached. Yeah. 2011, uh, I started looking for a team because I knew that structure was going to be important. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I knew that in order for me to get to that next level, I Absolutely. needed to have And New York training. is blessed with so many yeah. teams. So, so how did the dashing whippets? I, I basically just went on meetup and then I ran into um, the, dis the Dashing Whippets page, the description uh, on the front was, you know, it, it seemed like something I wanted to learn more about. Mm -hmm. And so, and then I kind of went through the, the membership. And after, you know, next to each name, there's a, a description of each, each runner and yeah, yeah. how they found the team. And so I just read through a few of those and I was sold. I said, I need to check this team out. Okay, so you showed up then? Yeah, uh, I just showed up. It was a Tuesday track workout, I believe. Uh -huh, it was uh -huh. in Central Park. They were doing hill repeats. Okay. So I just showed up. I met... Cat uh, Hill or Strawberry uh, Hill? It was actually Harlem Hill. Harlem to Big yeah. Hill. Oh, jeez. Yeah, those guys, they they guys don't fool around. <laughs> 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 no, they don't. Uh, they're a great team. So I, that's when I met, you know, the captains, Matt Wong and Patricia and uh, Rich, mm -hmm. and um, uh, developed some really good friends there. So I, I ran with them that day. At the time, they had a, you know, try us and if you like us, policy. Okay. So they invited me to come back and try a few more workouts, which I did, and then eventually I became a member. I think you got promoted to captain at some point. Yeah, uh, my skill level went up. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the better I got, the more I wanted to get involved. And so I started to find ways to, to do more than just running. I wanted to do more with the team. And that is help other people. Yeah. Because a captain has many roles. Right. Besides your own personal development. Right. A captain now has responsibility of bringing other people. Over, right. Right. So I found myself just naturally being more involved in, uh, in other things. Uh -huh. And in uh, early 2012, they decided to name me as a captain because I was already doing a lot of these things. They probably liked that day you were Kenyan. They probably said, oh, maybe some of that <laughs> speed, that Kenyan yeah. secret would bubble Yeah, there, there were a couple of us on the team. Uh, me and my friend Wams uh, were, were both from Kenya, and I, I'm sure they appreciated it. Oh, it was cachet to be a Kenyan runner. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like I, you had a good, a good amount of speed. I, yeah, I was a pretty good runner. I, you know, I, 
I always that you always have things you can work on for mm -hmm. sure, but for sure. Uh, uh, but running came easy to me, and it still does. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And that's I think that's a big reason why I enjoy it so much. Okay. Yeah. Well, to an introduction, I, I mentioned Back of My Feet, yep. which is a wonderful organization mm -hmm. that I heard from, uh, also from a Dashing whi Whippet at the time, Keno. Well, okay. he's back at the, Keno's back with the Dashing Whippet. Okay. And he told me about it, and that's an organization that helps people that are experiencing homelessness to get back in their feet. Right. How did you hear about them, and why did you get involved with them, considering that you were kind of busy now with the Dashing Whippet? Yeah. I was at a point in my life where I wanted to do more charity work. And, and help even more people. And so I found out about this group, and it was amazing to me how there was a group that was focused on running, focused on helping people through running, which is something that I'd become so passionate about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that caught my curiosity, and I looked into it uh, just, just sort of on a superficial level. And I found out uh, through their page that they're actually looking for a few positions, including what they called a coach. Uh, and uh, a coach and a coordinator and so on and so the coach position seemed to be best suited for my skills so I reached out to Mishka who uh, was the program coordinator at the time. Right, for, for the New York chapter. For, for the, the New, New York, York chapter, right. yep. Well, and we should mention that this is for New York because Back on My Feet has chapters yeah, that's all a, over the country. That's a good distinction. Yeah, this yeah. is just the New York chapter. Right, I think right. they began in, in, in Philly. Right, that's right, that's right. Now and they have Mishka, Mishka, Back on My Feet with her uh, handle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she was amazing. She was amazing. She is. And so uh, uh, she decided to bring me on. And that's when I started to coach uh, the Fortune Society. Uh, Which is located where? And, and that, that name has changed. I think they call it Uptown now. But it's, it's, on, um, it's on Riverside Drive um, at the Fortune Society building. So Where's between that? 140th and 141st. Oh, okay, that's yeah. way up there. Yeah, yeah, it's uptown. Regardless of which location you were at, you had to be at the Fortune Society by a certain time, yeah. like 5 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, one thing they did is they, they wanted people to learn how to be uh, committed and responsible, and so they had these five, th 545 a.m. runs Kay. three times a week, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And you, and you and, were a coach. Um, so since I was a coach, I had to be there a little earlier, so I would, I would get there at 5.30. 5.30. Yeah. And how did you get there? Did you run there? I would run. <laughs> I would just run from my apartment. I lived, on, I lived on the other side of Harlem at the time, on 135th and um, 5th Avenue. Okay. So I would just run across and up the hill and... Uh, uh, my goodness! Did you f well? Did you feel safe at that hour running? Uh, yeah, I felt fine. The, okay. Nothing's just, you know. I, I'm not. I have no fear when it comes oh, to running. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, but I know some of the other, especially the women, they would run within groups, which is a smart thing to do. Right, that's that's very true. Do their because all of them practically ran to their locations. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw a lot of people actually running yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, to meet us. So. Oh, and how long did you, did you do that? Uh, I, I was, uh, so I was with Back on My Feet for about, for about four to five months. Okay. And uh, I just wanted to keep going. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I uh, found out that um, Nike was bringing um, a running concept store to New York. And so, um, that also intrigued my curiosity. I, uh, I reached out to the head coach. Um, I was hired by, by Nike uh, to help open that store. Is that the Flatiron store? That's store? the Flatiron store oh, on okay. 20th and 5th. Okay, yep. because they had already stores in Nike Town, and I'm not sure if it's someplace else. Was that, maybe that was the second yeah, store they opened? Yeah, this was the second. So oh, Nike okay. Town was the first, and Nike Town ha had a, a, a men's running floor and a, men and a women's running floor. That's right. So this was... Um, a uh, running only store okay and it was the first running only store in new york uh, but the second nike store that's right that's right uh, i was part of nike but i never made it to the flat iron oh really and i guess you quickly became the iron runners yeah yeah then we adopted that name the iron runners um iron from from flat iron right and uh the store just grew from there Right, and I remember, I think I did go visit there. I think you had Alberto Salazar come and visit yeah. and give a talk. Yeah, that's one thing I've really enjoyed about working with Nike is we're always, something interesting and new and, and exciting is always happening. And so we get a chance to be involved in so many things, and that was one of them. Bringing Alberto to the store uh, was, was special. This is someone I had admired. I followed him, I followed the Oregon Project, and so to see him 
in front of me. Was well, it brought me to go to the flat. I yeah. have to, yeah. to meet Roberto, <laughs> you know. Exactly. Especially in a social setting. Yeah. Because he sounds like, he looks like a very serious guy when you see him on the, on the course. Yeah. He's intense. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. But now I think they open up a third store, mm -hmm. the Upper East Side, mm -hmm. which is near me. Uh, yeah, they opened right before the uh, 2013 New York City Marathon. Oh, okay. So and I think you made the switch there. Yeah, so s this was around f end of January, February? Of this year. Of this year. I moved from Flatiron to the Upper East Side store um, to do some, some things similar similar uh, tasks and some things a little different. I wanted to bring so, some skills over to that store and help. Uh, they had a, a much younger team and so this was a chance to help them grow. Okay. And okay. We have coaches, head coaches, okay. assistant coaches. But everybody coaches. Is, you know, helped each other yes, out. Yes, it's, it's yeah. very much a team. Oh. Yeah. Now, when I remember I was Nike years and years ago, not only with they coach, but they will also help with the, with the shoes and the clothing, helping the athletes purchase. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or pick out the right uh, shoes. Yep. yep. So that's that's one thing that we do very well. We have uh, ways of uh, analyzing gait. We have um, very skilled um, and knowledgeable people to to recommend apparel. Um, we have services now, such as Nike Plus NYC. Uh, which is an elevated running experience in the city um, and offers something every single day of the week. Oh, oh, oh okay. So okay. That's the changeover. You yeah. You're going to call it the, the evolution of Nike running. Yeah, every day of the week there's something happening. So uh, on Mondays there is the what they call NTC, which is a, a basically a uh, cross training, almost like a boot camp. Mm -hmm. You can think of it that way. Um, workout at Nike Town, so it's actually on the roof of Nike Town. Uh, that really? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Uh, Tuesdays they have the, what they call the home run, which is also from Nike Town. Okay, that's relatively new. Yeah. Because usually Tuesday was free. Tuesdays was a day off, day uh, off or a day for you to just run right, with your right, friends. But, or but, but the uh, Nike, t the runners of Nike Town love Nike and, and, the, and, your, and the Pacers, and they ask for something to help them recover from the weekend, and they would li they'd like that Tuesday thing, so you, you respond it was the home run day. We wanted to offer something every day, Kay. so Tuesday came on, Wednesday was the, Wednesday is the track workout, uh, which is at Icon Stadium, so it uh, people usually meet at the Upper East Side store close to you. Oh, where you where you are where, now. Where I am now, and um, then oh, they uh, get are you the leader for that? Um, I'm one of the pacers for it. Okay. So I pace along with uh, a, a number of other pacers. Oh, okay. Different rates, you know, seven miles, eight, yeah, nine, yeah. ten. So every week we have a different. Uh, okay. Different. And which is your pace? It depends. It really oh, depends. Okay. I can I can pace the seven. Um, well, we actually do it based on um, based on. F uh, 5K, 10K, Kay. those times, okay. and so um, I can pace a faster group. I can pace a slower group. Kay. It really, I don't have a set group. Okay, okay. Uh, well, you're, you're versatile changes. that way. Yeah, I mean, you go to the Icon yeah. Stadium. Yeah, so we and bus. A bus or we bus everyone to the Icon. And How many buses do you have? Three buses, and then we bus them back. <laughs> so it's it's really cool. Uh, we have these school buses that meet everyone at the store. And then, you know, school's in session. <laughs> and we go to Icon and we have these amazing workouts led by uh, an, a, f a phenomenal coach who is uh, probably one of the most successful high school coaches in the country. His name is uh, uh, Chris Bennett. And he, he hails from a team called CBA, um, which is in New Jersey. And it's probably, uh, it's, it's one of the most successful high school teams. Okay, so, so th they brought in Coach Bennett to th specifically for this program right. that started relatively recently. Yeah, not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Thursdays is a, what they call a local run. Okay. So that's almost like a recovery from the Wednesday workout. And it's, uh, it's a way to, for people to experience the city in a way they've never done before. Uh, so they run through different neighborhoods uh, and it's a point to point run where there's mobile bag check. Okay. And then Fridays is usually uh, a combination of running and training. Okay. So functional training okay. uh, and running. And then Saturdays, the long run. And I'll so uh, from different places. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this past weekend, it was at from the Upper East Side store. Okay. This following week will be at Nike Town. Okay. 
and that's a way for people to get their long runs in if they're looking to train for halves and fulls and so on. And, and a long run could be as much, I think, as 12 or 16 uh, or 18? We did 18. <laughs> that was the, we, we did an 18 miler this Oh, this I didn't past. realize it could have been in different places. Yeah. I'm so used to uh, being Nike Town I know. centric. I know, yeah, that's, that's what a lot of people say, uh, but we like to vary it. Okay. Switch it up a little. Okay. But I think there's st still always something going on Saturdays on Nike Town. Am I wrong about that? Uh, so Saturdays, as far as I know, it's just the, the long run. The long run, but it, but it depends either on the Upper East Side or Nike Town. Yes. Or perhaps the Flat Iron, depending how you want to mix it up. Depends on what the, what the training plan okay. calls for. And then Sundays is uh, what we call a rookie run. So rookie runs are uh, runs that cater to either beginner runners or runners who are coming back to the sport. And so where it's did, a chance where did they for them. Meet? They usually meet at uh, either at Flatiron or at Upper East. Oh, I, so I didn't know about the, yeah. the rookie run. So that's a, a chance for people to reintroduce themselves, much like I did yeah. a few years ago. To that's sport. interesting. I might be interested in a rookie yeah. run because I'm in, not a rookie, but I'm in a situation where I hurt my knee mm -hmm. almost two years ago, mm -hmm. and only now getting back to running. Oh, congratulations. Uh, thank you. I was, oh, I'm very relieved. Um, so I'm able to run almost two miles nonstop. Okay. <laughs> my stamina's not there. Okay. That's, so I was that's thinking, wow, maybe I should look into that rookie You run. should, yeah. It's it's really cool, and it's you know the 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 coaches are there, the support system is there, um, the motivation is there. So, oh, Nike is uh, does very well by its people, yep. and uh, and they and they have so so much passionate runners. Yeah, uh, you saw a taste of that. I yep. think that's a testament exactly. to the Nike brand exactly. and the support you guys give. It was very different in my day, uh, in the sense that. Um, we were growing, growing the club, mm -hmm. and so um, they had. Um, we had our own personal Eakin, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, that's Nike backwards. That's Nike backwards. Everything. But the point is, Nike since the very beginning. Even though the players have changed, mm -hmm. you know, the coaches, the pacing, uh, even the people. You know, people moved on and moved to various parts of the country. They all remember Nike. Well, actually, Nike is also in other places, in San Francisco, yeah. clubs all over, even Tokyo. Exactly. Because I know we're getting visitors from uh, internationally to come to visit. Yeah, it, N Nike is, it's, it's becoming, um, it's getting to the point where we now can uh, share experiences, you know, across the country and across the, the globe. Uh, oh, excellent. Well, let's talk quick talk about your shoe. That's one of the ones that uh, you work with. The, what's it called? This is the Flyknit Racing Shoe. It's a uh, Flyknit material uh, on the upper of the shoe. Uh, it's actually knit fabric material, uh, and it's on a racing flat um, outsole. <coughs> so this is designed to be a marathon shoe, but it does well as just a a casual shoe, as you can see. As you're wearing um, as a casual shoe. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool a very looking. comfortable shoe. This is something that we started uh, in 2012, I believe. Uh, you mean this particular brand? Uh, the Flyknit Racer yeah, made yeah. its debut in 2012. Do, do they change every 12 months or 18 months? The, the, color, the colors change. Uh, okay. The design has been the, it's the, same. It's been okay. the same pretty much. And it's oh, okay. It's well, in, in closing, mm -hmm. what's uh, some of your personal challenges that you have coming up in terms of racing? Well, I, so I, when I started training, I s found, quickly found out that um, I had quite a good range of abilities. So I could, you know, I could run and race anything from the mile all the way to the marathon, and I was still feel comfortable doing so. And so I, I think it was 20, 2010, I signed up for my first, um, no, 2011, I signed up for my first Fifth Avenue mile, and I ran that. And I was also in the middle of marathon training when I ran it. Okay. The, the timing of the Fifth Avenue mile, okay. you know. So, uh, but I enjoyed the Fifth Avenue mile so much that I decided I wanted to run that race every single year. Yeah. Now, so, do you do the, how, how fast do you do that? Uh, my first race was in 530, okay. 5.32. And then the most recent, last uh, two years ago, I ran in 4.40. Oh, that's a big difference. So, yeah. 
what accounted for the huge dash? Well, a lot of it was the dashing whippets train. Dashing whippets. Yeah, a lot of it was the dashing whippets train. So, so you mentioned the name Scott uh, Baton. Yes, again? Scott. Scott is is the coach. Is the coach. Uh, his training plans we followed. We did the workouts every Thursday, and that was a big reason. Oh, for, for that that progress. And then, the the training I did with uh, my Nike colleagues uh, was also really instrumental. So. I, so so the, marath the mile became one of my favorite races. Mm -hmm. uh, I ran Lehigh that year, 2011. The Lehigh Marathon. The yeah. Lehigh Marathon, yep. That was where I BQ'd. And then I ran Boston the following year. It's uh, one of the hottest days on record. Oh, hottest day. Yeah. Oh, so geez. right. They almost canceled that. Mm -hmm. I remember it. It was a they lot were of talk. They were offering people um, deferments. That's, oh, and, that's uh, unusual. Yeah. Did they... It was well, Chicago. I think they, at the middle of it, they canceled it. That's right. Yeah, Chicago. They actually stopped the race. It was that the same year. I think that was before. That was before. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I think you're doing Chicago coming up, right? Yes. I love the mile and I love these short distances. But every year, I want to be able to check off what I call a bucket list run a uh, race. And so Chicago is on my bucket list. Okay. So and then next year will be another. Wait a minute. How, how old are you? you? You're too young to have a bucket list. <laughs> I have a bucket list. I have a that bucket list of every single major marathon I'd like to run. Oh, OK. That's you, a goal. That's not a bucket yeah. list. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah. And I actually started coaching recently. So, so I um, I signed up for a USATF co course, and I, I became certified as a as, as a, a running, as a running coach. coach. Yeah. So I as soon as I did that, I dived into coaching. Okay. And so you have your little group of people that's that been helped. Did you help? Yeah. Well, it's you, okay. You always have been doing that, but now you now you can go out there in uh, in the park and wear your coach jacket. Right. Or something. Exactly. <laughs> well, listen. Yeah. On, on that note. Mm -hmm. Wish you great success. Thank I, you. I'm sure it sounds like you will have great success if you keep up this, this vigor, and uh, it's just great to to see thank a you. young person like yourself succeed in so many levels. Listen, thank you again for coming. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Will. It's a pleasure. I appreciate it.